the golden age of Elizabeth I has ended, and she's left no heir to the throne. The nearest claimant is King James VI of Scotland, the son of Elizabeth's cousin, Mary Queen of Scots. For James I of England, we have two options. Go to my video, James I and the Gunpowder Plot. Which should I watch? For this, I'll be going with Gunpowder, Treason, and Plot. Gunpowder, Treason, and Plot is a 2004 BBC miniseries that really feels like two movies. The first about Mary and the other about her son, James. It covers from when Mary first arrives back in Scotland and ends with the story of Guy Fox. Ratings. I can't say it's the prettiest or best written movie I've ever seen, but I will say that Robert Carlyle as James I painted a very real and interesting king for me. This man is at times a coward and then you empathize with him. He's a horrible person and then you feel sorry for him. So many contradictions and masterfully done. I never got bored. Sex and nudity. There are quite a few forced and violent sexual interactions. I did find the evolution of the king's marriage with Anne very interesting, but at times it was hard to watch. Violence and gore. No epic battles or torture scenes, but there are some fairly bloody massacres and body piles. For the next two on our list, we have three options that cover both King Charles I and Oliver Cromwell. Go check out that video. For this marathon, I'll be going with Cromwell. Cromwell is a classic 1970 British film starring both Charles I and Oliver Cromwell. We mostly follow Cromwell, but we do get to follow both men through the English Civil War and some of the aftermath. Ratings. I loved this movie. The sets and costumes are gorgeous. It even won an Academy Award for Best Costume Design. We also get to watch two master actors at work. Cromwell is played by Richard Harris, and King Charles is played by Alec Guinness. This is not a movie where I get a lot of crochet done while it's on. Sex and Nudity Nothing to say in this section, since there is no sex or nudity. If that's what you're looking for, probably best to choose a different option. Violence and Gore It's been a while since we had a good war movie. I think this is the first war in our marathon where the battleground really starts to change where there are more guns than swords being used. It's also the first in a while where they show off battle tactics. I was very impressed with the cinematography and choreography of the battles. Though, sorry to those of you who love gore, it never does get very bloody. Next up, we have Charles II, The Power and the Passion. This is a 2003 British television film in four episodes depicting the entire reign of Charles II. There are actually two versions of this. If you can, definitely make sure you find the original British version and not The Last King, The Power and the Passion, released in North America. It cuts out so much. Ratings. This is in my top five of TV shows and movies in the entire Monarchy Marathon. Charles II was such an interesting king and his reign was a constant power struggle between him and Parliament. They squeeze in a lot in only four hours. All aspects of this are fantastic. We have an all-around stellar cast, amazing costumes and sets, great writing, and yeah, if you liked the Tudors, you will like this. Sex and Nudity There is a lot of talk about sex and innuendo, but nothing graphic. Charles II was known for having many mistresses, and we get to meet quite a few of them. Warning for some age-inappropriate relations. Violence and Gore very little violence and no gore. This show mostly focuses on romance and politics. Sadly, we don't have anything that focuses specifically on our next three monarchs, so the next best thing is The First Churchills, which is a BBC serial from 1969 about the life of John Churchill and his wife Sarah Churchill. While not specifically about the monarchs, this is the only show that gives us a closer look at some of our last Stuart kings and queens. It takes us from Charles II to James II, William III and Mary II, and ends with Anne I. Ratings. I have mixed feelings on this. On one hand, I super appreciate that it gives us an account of what is going on during this time period, and overall I think the acting was well done. However, to be frank, the writing for me was boring, and the production design is lackluster. 
It took me about halfway through the series before I became even a little invested. If you're a completionist like me and appreciate a lot of period political chit chat, overall, I don't think you'll regret watching it. Sex and nudity. There is innuendo sex going on behind closed doors, but that's it. Violence and gore. There is a teeny tiny bit of violence in the form of low budget explosions and people falling over. All the sparring is the verbal kind. This is 100% child safe. Lastly, we have The Favorite. This takes place at the end of Queen Anne's reign and primarily revolves around a love triangle she has going on with Sarah Churchill and a new servant, Abigail. Ratings. This has some fantastic talent, including Olivia Coleman as Queen Anne, also Rachel Wise and Emma Stone. I will say that I did not love this movie. It's definitely more of an artistic piece, which I usually don't mind, but in this case, it's more there for the pretty than the plot. The costumes are at times over the top and interesting, but mostly I was bored with the entire plot about women being petty and vengeful. But hey, maybe that's your jam. Sex and nudity. There are quite a few sexual scenes between Queen Anne and either Sarah or Abigail. No full nudity, but graphic enough that you get the point. Violence and gore. No battles, torture scenes, hangings, or anything we are used to at this point. What we do get this time around are intense cat fights. Rated R for strong sexual content, nudity, and language. That's it. See you next time with the House of Hanover. Happy watching.